natural hazard assessment, epidemiology, <coughs> epidemiology, and so on. This is because remote sensing imagery information such as 2D or 3D geometry, the description of land cover, and as well as the, the evidence of land use as proof. <coughs> Using remote sensing for such applications has several advantages. Surveys often faster and cheaper using images. Traditional pedestrian mapping is often limited to boundaries, while uh, remote sensing imagery provides us some uh, qualitative information about the content of the, the process. And also, remote sensing provides a visual support, and I will come back later on to this very interesting advantage. The use of this information for land management is relevant because human settlements generate patterns on the earth, on, on the earth surface, and, and these patterns are under two influences. First, uh, they are the special expression of the land policy. This is the example uh, with A. And secondly, the example with B, these patterns uh, are influenced by the presence of natural constraints <coughs> or obstacles. These patterns are the expression of the history of the land use. For instance, we can easily recognize on the left side the border between the US and the north and, uh, and Mexico and the south. And on the right, we can recognize the deforestation process in the Brazilian Amazonia. But also remote sensing can show the, uh, the past land use system, like this folder from the system. Uh, where uh, sugarcane was cultivated in the 18th century, this is in South America, and this uh, system is totally invisible <coughs> today when you are on the ground. In fact, one of the main goals of geography is to give a meaning to these patterns, and uh, two requirements uh, have to be fulfilled for this. The first requirement is, the, uh, is that uh, two-dimensional geometry has to be defined on the Earth's surface, and this is the purpose of geodesy. Uh, so that any point can be located on the Earth's surface. And when I'm speaking of geometry, I'm referring to both measurement possibilities and uh, topological rules so that relationship can be defined between objects. And the second requirement is the availability of uh, sensors, and in particular imaging sensors, that can provide a description of the Earth's surface at a suitable scale or resolution and in the suitable spectral domain. And uh, we can say that nowadays these sensors are widely available. Several technological improvements have occurred in the field of remote sensing in the last decades and years, and they have modified the way remote sensing is used and its possible contribution to land management. I think the most important improvement has been ground resolution. This parameter is expressed, is expressed here in meters on the vertical axis. And uh, we can see that it has been significantly improved in the last decade. The problem is that, uh, for technical reasons, a higher resolution implies a smaller image. And you know that in the last 10 years, several uh, Earth observation systems have provided imagery with uh, resolutions around 1 meter and image swath around 10 to 15 kilometers. And this is quite similar to what is uh, provided by, by airborne remote sensing so that for the user, uh, the difference between airborne and spaceborne remote sensing has become meaningless. The next generation is represented by the Pleiad system, which is the optical component of a broader Earth observation system designed by the French and Italian space agencies. The first satellite will be launched in a few months and it will provide images with submetric resolution and stereo capabilities. Just let me show you a simulation. The simulation of the city of Cannes in, south, in the south of France confirms the, the potential of this kind of product for urban mapping and planning. In <coughs> fact, very high resolution is greatly appreciated by all users. However, the systematic improvement of ground resolution has a drawback because it implies that uh, time series over several decades are heterogeneous. And uh, this is an important limitation <coughs> for long-term uh, land monitoring. So this is the main uh, drawback, I think. I think. Other innovation can be listed. Uh, the improvement of absolute location accuracy, which is based on star sensors and which reduces the needs for ground control points. Also stereo capabilities, 
which are essential for 3D location and for the generation of digital terrain models. This has uh, contributed to the automation of image rectification, so that Autophoto has now become a standard product either for permanent databases or for one-shot projects. I will also recall the fact that digital, digital that geographical information has now become fully digital, and this has allowed the automation of mapping processes, and uh, it has made digital information systems the standard working environment for land management. And finally, uh, the development of the internet has given access to the information for a wider use of community. Just to show you a few examples, these two examples are uh, two free access web portals of the French government. On the left, it's the orthophoto mosaic distributed by the National Space Agency. On the right, it's the cadastral map distributed by the cadastral uh, administration. And the French professional organization has developed its own portal, and we have the presentation about it uh, yesterday evening. I'm sorry, the image was late. And then the, the, finally, the tendency nowadays is that these databases are becoming uh, three-dimensional. All these technological improvements have modified the operational uh, implementation of uh, remote sensing. However, some limitations uh, still exist and I think will always exist. For example, uh, the fact that GIS is well adapted to landscapes with uh, geometric organization in which land parcels have discontinuous boundaries and homogeneous contents, and it's not so well adapted to this kind of uh, fuzzy landscape on the left side uh, for the same reasons. Another limitation is the fact that even if a boundary is clearly visible on the ground, it's not necessarily visible uh, in the image. And uh, this, limitation, this limitation will always exist in re since remote sensing can only show the visible aspects of land organization. Finally, I would like to show that some technological in innovations are offering new possibilities in the field of land management. And I will just give two examples. The first example is virtual delineation, <coughs> which means that the boundary is defined in the rectified image and not only on the ground. The use of remote sensing for virtual delineation has two main constraints, location accuracy and image quality, which is not only image resolution. It is obvious that virtual delineation will never replace a surveyor for several reasons, because the legal value of the images is not always so clear, and because legal boundaries do not always fit uh, the visible boundaries, as I already mentioned. However, uh, this kind of product uh, can pro provide valuable help to the surveyor to save and share the information more securely and to replace traditional delineation in some specific situations. For instance, when the boundary position is not accessible, it can be in the water, in the middle of a river, or inside very thick vegetated areas. And also when the boundary is curvilinear or very complex, like such as a fractal line. Just to illustrate, uh, we can see that uh, uh, when the boundary is a curve, the polygon model based on a few uh, land points is not always uh, very, a very clever model. And when the boundary is very complex, uh, we have the same problem. However, however, a limited number of points uh, can be sufficient to define the, the global land, uh, land parcel shape if a remote sensing image is used to provide a more detailed description of the parcel shape. The second uh, example is the use of image information for uh, communication with the general public. Several reasons explain this, uh, this potential. Uh, an auto image is generally much more friendly than a map and it requires a uh, very limited technical skill. The information is not uh, filtered by any specific interpretation. And also the cost per square kilometer is often much lower. The consequence is the great potential of remote sensing imagery to communicate with non-expert 
partners and with the general public about land management, land management projects. To conclude, I will recall that remote sensing can contribute to improve uh, land administration services and to communicate with the general public. But we should not forget uh, that the experts who handle this information have now an increasing responsibility. And just to, to give some uh, example, some well-known example, I will recall that uh, an acknowledgement of this responsibility has recently been expressed uh, by the professional communi uh, community in recent declarations. I just give two examples, the banking declarations of uh, IHPRS uh, written in 2008 and the Sydney declaration of the FIG in 2010. This declaration, uh, mean <coughs> the, the, this declaration clearly means that the new developments should always be driven by the needs of society. And this will be the concluding sentence. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.